In this video, I want to show you how to integrate Celery Beat into a Flask app. Before we get into Celery Beat and how to schedule tasks dynamically, what I want to do is I want to show you the task that I'm eventually going to schedule in this video. So the task just takes an image, calls the OpenAI image API, and generates it. So mountains and a valley, right? So I'll generate this and then I'll wait for it to come back. And then there's going to be an image of what I just prompted. So only takes like 10, 15 seconds normally. So I'll just wait for it to appear here. And if you want to learn how I created this app, I have another video where I introduce Celery and Flask. So you can watch that first because this video builds on top of it. But anyway, here's the image that I have here. So mountains in a valley. And the idea is I want to allow the user to schedule this generation according to whatever interval they want. So if they want to generate a new image every 90 seconds, they can. And because each time you prompt with something, it will generate a unique image. This is fine. So let's get into how all that works. Let's go back to the code. So this is the code that I wrote in the previous video on how to get Celery working with Flask. So I'm going to extend this and modify it a little bit so it can work with Celery Beat. So if you're not familiar with Celery Beat, Celery Beat is a scheduler that comes along with Celery. So Celery is for running the tasks and Beat is for scheduling tasks. So by default, you can schedule tasks statically. So you can basically set up a record that lists the task that you want to run according to some interval, but that's not very interesting because you set that up as a developer. If you want your users to be able to schedule tasks, then that's where Beat is more interesting and that's where you can use a library called RedBeat. So what you wanna do is you want to install a library called Celery RedBeat, and this will allow you to dynamically schedule things in your system. So it's just UV add Celery Red Beat if you're using uh, UV, if you're using pip, just pip install Celery Red Beat in addition to the other things that are necessary for this project. So like Flask, Celery, Redis, and so on. So I already have my Celery worker working. So as we can see here, it sends a post request and generated the image. So Celery is already working and connected. And like Celery, there is a command to start up Redbeat. So if I go to commands.sh here, uh, these are the commands that are necessary in this video. And this command here is for starting Celery. And as you can see, this command here is for starting Beat. So it's pretty similar to the one for starting Celery, except for instead of worker, you use Beat. And then you need to tell it that you wanna use Redbeat to manage the schedules because Redbeat is much better at managing the schedules than Celery. So let's go ahead and copy this. So let's paste this into my third terminal and start it up. And we see here, it looks pretty similar to the uh, Celery Worker start. Just uh, this one had an error when I restarted Redis. So let me start the worker again. But we see we get some information about where it's connected and um, the status of it. So by default, Redbeat uses the same Redis broker as the Celery Worker. So because I'm using Redis just on localhost 6379, Celery Redbeat is going to do the same thing. So now let's look into how to uh, get Redbeat to work. So the first thing I want to do before I even bring in Redbeat is I want to modify the form that I have to support a new field called interval. So let's open up index. And then in here, I just want to add a new input. So input type uh, text class is going to be form control and placeholder will be some number of seconds. So let's say 60 seconds, and then name will be interval, okay? So if we start up the app, and we go over to browser, uh, we see we have 60 here as a placeholder, and this is where we're gonna put in a time. So if the user wants to schedule this to run every 80 seconds, uh, we can just type in 80. So now let's go back over to routes. And what I wanna do now is I wanna bring in the Celery Redbeat stuff. So first, I'll import uh, from Redbeat. I'm gonna import something called Red Beat Scheduler Entry, and this is the main thing that we have to use. So then what I wanna do is I'm going to comment out this generate image dot delay because I don't want it to run once, I want it to run multiple times. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the Redbeat schedule entry, the class, and then there are a few things that I need to pass to it. So the first thing I need to pass is a schedule name. So I'll put schedule name here. Um, I'll create the variable in a second. It's just gonna be UUID. 
The second thing I want to pass is the location of the task that I want to run. So we see here I'm in an app directory and then my tasks are in tasks.py and the name of the task is generate image. So it's going to match what you see here in Celery. So you can just copy this app tasks generate image or whatever the name of your task is and just copy it there. The next thing we're going to have is the interval. So I'll just put interval here. Once again, I'll make that a variable. And then we want to pass some arguments. So the first argument that I want to pass is the prompt. So the prompt is just going to go in the argument list like this. And then the second argument that I want to pass is going to be the schedule name. So we're not going to use the schedule name for anything in the task in this video, but it's good form to have the schedule name passed along to the task, just in case you want the task to like stop the schedule for whatever reason. Like maybe you want it to run a certain number of times and then you want to stop it after that. Uh, you can stop it as long as you have the name. So I'm going to add a parameter called schedule name here, even though I'm not going to use it. So let's just save tasks.py. And then back here, um, after the arguments, I need to pass in the app. So the app is going to be the Celery app in this case. So what I can do is I can do from Celery, import current app. And because Flask also uses something called current app, I'll rename this to be Celery app. So as Celery underscore app. And this is just a proxy to the actual Celery app, uh, which is set up through Flask. So I'll copy Celery app and I'll just put it here. App equals Celery app down there. And then that completes my schedule entry. And then this is going to return a new object and I can just call dot save on that object. So what I want to do up here is I need the schedule name and I need the interval. So for the schedule name, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, UUID4. So UUID4 and I'll just call it and I just need to import this. So I'll say from UUID import UUID4. Okay, that will just create a new schedule name. So this should be schedule underscore name. And then after that, I need to create the interval. So the interval is going to come from Celery. So if I go to, let's see, if I go here and I say, oh no, it's Celery schedules. Okay, so if I go here and say from Celery.schedules, import schedule, then this basic scheduling function will allow me to schedule based off a number of seconds. So if I put 16 here, then it will run every minute. There are more complicated scheduling mechanisms or you can come up with your own, but this is the most basic one. So I figured I'd use it for this video. So I'll pass in 60 here if the user puts in 60, but I just remembered I have the form now. So inside of the form, we have the interval field and I just want to coerce this to an integer. We're not gonna do any validation on the front end, so I just need to make sure I'm passing a number in here. And then this interval is gonna be passed to Redweed Scheduler entry, and then that's going to schedule it. So now I can save this. And what I wanna do is, I'll just restart everything to be safe. So restart Celery, restart Celery Beat, the worker, and then the Flask app. The Flask app should restart by itself. And then I wanna go over to the app, refresh, and now I'll just describe another image. So I'll describe the same image, so mountains and a valley, and I want this to run every 90 seconds. So let's go ahead and generate this and make sure there are no errors. So no errors for Flask. Uh, Celery won't run the task until the schedule tells it it's time to run. So here it looks like it's not saving properly, so let me try one more thing. Uh, because it doesn't like this syntax. So I'll do entry.save. So I'll return this as entry and then call entry.save. So let me go ahead and restart everything. Uh, the chaining syntax doesn't want to work properly. So I'll just go with the longer version syntax, which is fine. So entry.save. And now let's do the same thing. So a, or let's see, mountains and a valley. And then we're gonna do, let's say every 90 seconds. So generate, let's go back here and let's take a look. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna look inside of Redis. So I have Redis Commander working on port 8081 and we wanna see if we have the schedule set up. So here I have one every 90 seconds and here every 90 seconds. So it turns out the first one worked. I was expecting uh, a different output, but we see mountains in a valley appears twice, mountains in a valley, but they are different. So it's gonna generate uh, an image for each schedule. So let's look at the terminal 
And what's going to happen is after 90 seconds, it's going to pick up a task because Celery Beat is going to send it. There we go. That's the first one. So it receives the task and then it's going to call the open AI uh, API to uh, generate the image. And then when the image is done, it's going to save to the database according to the task here. So let's just wait for that to finish. And then we also see, well, okay, so this one has succeeded. And then I guess in a moment, we're going to see the other task pick up because I have two instead of one. So we'll just wait for that one to appear. And then once it appears, I'll go back to the browser to show you uh, the image that it generated. So just waiting here, it was maybe like 15 seconds after I did the other one or maybe 45 seconds, uh, we'll see. Okay, there we go. So I just received the task. So let's go over here and refresh. And we see that's one picture of mounds in a valley. And then here's another picture of mounds in a valley. And then when that third one completes, which it should complete any moment now. So that's the first, second. Let's refresh one more time. First, second, maybe this one. First, second, third. Okay, here we go. So here's the third image of the mountains and a valley. So I'll wait, I'll skip forward in the editing and I'll show you the result after it has processed a few times. Okay, I'm back. So it has run a few times. So let's look here in the app and just scrolling through, we see different pictures of mountains in a valley. And of course they're all different because you get different values. And then looking here inside of Redis Commander, we can see more tasks have been created here, one for each one. We see the total run count here is three for that one, three for that one, and it will just continue to run until I either get rid of the task or I turn off everything. So it looks like it's working properly. So as you can see, it's really easy to get set up with uh, dynamic schedules in Flask. So if you want to use dynamic tasks in your Flask app, I highly recommend Celery Redbeat. It's really easy to use, as you can see here. And uh, you can do the chaining syntax if you want, like I did the first time, and it should work. So that's it for this video. If you're interested in learning how I created this example app, just click on this video here and you can learn how I created the app.